the powerful tools for modeling in 2017 that will just kind of help and enhance, uh, make it easier to model and create your designs in just a little bit of a faster manner. I think beforehand there was a couple of different features or kind of steps that you'd have to take and SolidWorks has done a good job of this year of improving some of those things where we can do multi-steps in a single operation and also modifying between different features such as going from a chamfer to a fillet or a fillet to a chamfer um, instead of having to delete them. So a couple of things that we're going to cover uh, just beforehand, just to throw it out there, uh, obviously with Hawkert support, um, if you guys are on subscription, uh, if you want to reach out to us, whether you're in Canada or the U.S., uh, by any means, please uh, contact us by phone or email or through the website hawkridgesyscom support If you have any questions during the webinar, please just submit them through the questions tab or in the chat box, and I will try to look to my other screen to uh, answer anything if it's unclear. So just talking about it, different components when we're designing that we need to innovate, design, validate, collaborate, and manage and build. So for today, we're going to be focusing on the design aspect. Uh, so a couple of things that we're going to be looking at is what's new in 2017 for the general user interface. Again, a couple of things got cleaned up and polished just for easier clicking and tagging along. Then we're going to look at some of the enhancements made in sketching. We'll take a look. There's a couple of features that are added in for part modeling that uh, we'll add in to just make thread creation a little bit easier. Uh, we got a new feature called Advanced Tools. And then we're also going to look at surfacing and some of the easiest ways of now creating uh, offsets on curved surfaces instead of just planar, as well as we're going to look at the enhancements in sheet metal. So just for the kind of intro, we're going to look at how breadcrumbs have been enhanced to kind of give us the ability to look at some of the reference planes. We also now have the ability to look at to hide and show all the items. So again, any reference geometry such as planes, origins, coordinate systems, uh, sketches is now able to be activated on and off at the same time instead of having to do one individually. Uh, we'll also look at how the parent-child visualization has changed. Um, and uh, how it's a little bit easier to visualize any errors or warnings. We can also now change the order of configuration. So beforehand, you'd probably have to scroll down, but now we can um, prioritize ours by either dragging it manually or having them by numerical order or in the preference. So when we're changing the design in our overall assembly, it makes it just a lot easier and faster. Um, the nice thing that I really like with 2017 this year is the ability to add comments. And yes, we were able to add comments before, but they weren't really visible. Now we can actually see them a little bit more clear. And uh, when you're collaborating with others, it's just nice, a nice way to represent it. We can also insert images. And we can also add these comments now, not just to features, parts, and assemblies, but also to different mates, sensors, and uh, uh, extra ones. And then the last thing is, is we can also do uh, control the, the decal or the decal visibility with display states. So if you have a product that has different uh, colors on it, this is a nice way to do so. So let's take a look at that first. Um, I have our MyMO product here available just to help people with uh, some uh, movement. They can use this little tool to uh, hold their objects and control them, people. Um, so let's take a look at some of the things that are new for 2017. So the first thing is the user interface. So just even looking down at the objects here, we look at the dynamic visualization with the parent-child association. You can see that the arrows are no, no longer round. They used to kind of hide the text or any of the visibility. So now they're a little bit more clear and concise. Um, they're not covering any text. So this is just a nice enhancement. If you have these turned on, if you do use them or not, just a reminder here, if you right click on the top level assembly, you can turn on those dynamic reference visualizations uh, for parent and child. Uh, preference is up to you if you want to have one or the other or both. But it's nice to be able to reference back and forth. Uh, the other thing we have now with the ability here is the breadcrumbs. So just by clicking the D on your keyboard, uh, you can bring the breadcrumbs right to your cursor. And if you click on any one of the parts or the sub-assemblies, you can now reference or see the reference planes, for example, or any of the associated mates. Um, it just makes it easier to create further mates, or if there's any errors or warnings, uh, they will be associated right here at the tip. Uh, beforehand, I always had to kind of go back to the feature manager tree and try and find the mates folder and see you know, if there's any warning. But right now, it's just right there, and I can click right through it and see the association right at my fingertips instead of having to drag my cursor back and forth all the time. So I really like that for 2017. 
the other thing that we also have is uh, typically, like I said, with the show and hide, beforehand we'd have to turn off all these individually uh, if you had to view any axes or planes or sketches. Typically I have a short key, that's my personal kind of preference, to have the letter H as my customized um, shortcut for hiding sketches or planes, for example. So if you have all of these turned on, turned off at the on at the same time, sorry, um, you can now be able to turn them all off and then turn on whatever the default setting was just by uh, clicking on the eye here. So that's nice um, if you just kind of want to have a final kind of visualization of the, of the product that you're working with instead of having to do them one at a time. Now let's take a look at comments. So comments, again, we did have them before, but they weren't, you know, you weren't really able to look at them or kind of edit and review them. So now, if we go to the top level assembly, if I right click on it and I go to the tree display, I can actually turn on the uh, comment indicator. And so anything that might have a comment next to it, any of the features, again, sensors uh, or mates or anything like that now have these little comments or these notes and if I just highlight, kind of have my cursor hovering over them, I can actually see any of those notes that are added in. So I can make sure that, you know, I'm not modifying something that one of my coworkers might have made a change on. And if I expand my comments folder in here, I can even see the comments that are associated, like I said, with different mates or assemblies or even folders that you can add them in. And the other nice thing is now, if I um, have my own comment, it was, you can only just input text and timestamps. Uh, so now what we can do is we can also say uh, that we have more colors available and it's, you know, that's nice to say, but we won't actually be able to visualize it. So now with the comments in 2017, we can also insert images or screenshots of our model to just make it nice and easy to identify what we're exactly looking at. So you can specify by the kind of image type that you want, whether it's a bitmap or a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG, and I can import that image into the comment section and save it. So now if somebody is going to review kind of any of the comments that are added in, I can view all of those comments at the same time and review them. So just different sorting ways by hierarchy uh, of the date that the comment was added in, I can review those from top to down and see exactly where it was specified in. And if I kind of highlight or the comments specifically, it would also update that in the graphics area to show us exactly where we're looking. So that's a nice thing now. I feel like that comments tool now has uh, actual use to people that might need it uh, to comment and kind of leave things on the side. Another thing, like I said, we can also now change the order of the configuration. So I'm just going to open up this uh, pan screw in here and now we can change the order. So beforehand, you kind of had to, you know, look down the list and drop down to find the particular size if you wanted it changed. Now what we can do is that if I just right click in the configurations tab, I can also change the order. So the tree order can now be towards numeric or literal or manual or also history based, depending on how you created the configuration. So now that it's in manual, I can just take any one of these and just drag them up at the top at any point. And if those are, you know, the first common five that I'm using all the time, I'd rather have them up here instead of having them somewhere in the middle. And now if I go back to my model here and decide to change that, I can just drop it down and those three kind of that I dragged up to the top are easy to select at any point and modify. So I don't have to scroll down that list. So I think that's a good one. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier to modify. Now let's take a look at some of the other enhancements that were made with sketching. I'll open up this uh, bracket here or the support <clears throat> face and we can sketch on it. And the nice thing about it is, is that now if I use my right click button, any of the sketch entities before, uh, it was a little bit more cluttered. They kind of made it a little bit more spaced out so it's, it's easier to select things. Um, so I'm just going to create a slot in here and I'll sketch it up at the top here. And you'll notice that as I create the shape, once it's done, we actually have this shaded area now. Um, so there's this other extra option here for the shaded sketch contour tool that's available. And it just makes it nice to see whether or not you're going to have a closed contour, right? Because if you have an open contour, it typically wouldn't extrude out. So it just makes it a little bit easier to identify it. If you don't like that, like I said, you can always turn it off. Um, I do like to see it on now. And if I just drop down, uh, add another kind of circle on the bottom here. I can also take it by this gray shape and I can drag anything that's unconstrained and move it kind of in the position that I want it in. So I can drop it down here and uh, just connect or add any of the relations that are possible. 
Again, even just by clicking on the face, I can also immediately through the shortcuts bar now have an offset quickly created. Uh, depending in which direction I want to go in and instantly create that geometry without having to really move my cursor away from where I'm creating my model. Now the new thing with 2017 is if you hold down the Alt on your keyboard, you can actually select the, uh, the contours of your model instead of having to right click and select contour. So I can do multiple ones here and uh, at the same time and just holding down the control, you're able to do both. And then I can just quickly extrude those um, easily without having too much complication, not having to do the extra right clicks and easily create that geometry a lot faster than I would have so done before in 2016. So now let's take a look at some of the other enhancements when we're looking at maybe simple geometry but it's a little bit more complex and so we need to do kind of a cross-section view to take a look at our uh, sub-assembly here of all the parts that are included. And using the cross-section view, uh, you know, it was easier to kind of, you can pull stuff in here and, you know, look at the, the part file that you're looking for, but it was kind of hard to visualize with the geometry that was hidden. So in 2017 now, we have this uh, transparently section component, so we can actually have objects that are hidden in a transparent view. So I'll change the transparency here to 0.8, and I can select any of the features of the bodies uh, within my geometry and it just helps it, you know, visualize um, how the geometry is associated with instead of just having this kind of hidden section and not being able to see it. So um, if you are looking internally into your model a lot with a lot of complex uh, details in it, this is a nice way to summarize that. So now let's take a look at this uh, inner kind of nut or shaft that we have and uh, let's look at some of the enhancements that are done with the thread feature. So with the thread feature, you guys know here, um, I'll start it up. Uh, you can do your own custom thread profile, same as uh, Weldman profiles that you can have. Uh, we can specify the revolutions or any offsets that we may have. And uh, you've had to, done so, you have to do some extra work to kind of finish off the taper. But actually now with 2017, we have the ability to automatically trim with the start and end face. So it's just a little bit uh, less work that you have to do. And we can also have multiple starts. So instead of having to pattern the thread, uh, the thread feature afterwards, we can now do it in the same single operation. So you can select as many uh, starts, the multiple starts that you want. Just make sure that you have enough clearance in the pitch with your geometry. Otherwise, it works out uh, pretty quickly here. So if I just press OK, and I'll just make sure that it's an extruded thread, uh, turn it on, and we can kind of see how the thread is trimmed. So the next thing we'll add in here is a new update with the sweep profile. So beforehand, we'd had to, when we use the sweep feature, we have to create two sketches that are perpendicular to one another. Um, so typically, if I had the space, I'd have to click on it, start a new sketch on it, use convert entities. But with 2017, we can now use spaces, edges, and curves to do it. So I just, just can just highlight that face and uh, select the sweep feature. And it'll automatically select it. And I'll just select the path and I don't have to do that extra step of creating it. So it just, it's doing it's using the sweep feature a lot faster. Um, I've been looking forward to this. I sweep a lot, and it just sometimes I have objects, and I don't want to do that extra step of having to sketch. So I'll just click on the sweep and do the other end here and automatically will taper off that thread for me. So it makes it nice and easy. Uh, you saw it only took me you know, a couple of seconds to get that done. So you guys know that patterning in SOLIDWORKS is a pretty common feature for using things. Uh, we're going to take a look at the circular pattern and how that was enhanced this year. So just by turning it off here, I'll uh, highlight the feature that I want to pattern. And uh, I'll just select the direction here. So you guys are familiar that we were able to kind of always go in one direction here. But with 2017, we now have the ability to also go in direction number two, right? So same as kind of linear pattern, so we can change it up on the other side here and specify a different instance, or I can always go symmetric to direction number one. So again, if you did kind of have some sort of obstacle on the other end, you'd have to do this in two separate uh, circular patterns. Now we can do it in one go. It's fast and easy, and uh, it should make things, I mean, it, it is making things a lot easier and more efficient. So that is it for the circular patterns and the threads. Now let's look at some of the enhancements with the uh, chamfers. Just go back to this model here. We'll open up this part up. 
the cover here. And uh, so some of the new things in 2017 with the chamfer feature, we now have a lot of the advanced options available that were only avail available with fillets before. So if I just start up on any one of the edges here, we'll activate the uh, chamfer feature. And now I have the ability to also do an offset face or a face face chamfer, which is uh, if you work with it in fillets, makes things a little bit easier. And now we also have the multi-distance chamfer available. So as I highlight along here, specify 0.5 for these two phases, and I can select any one of the edges. And just by clicking in the little pop-up boxes, I can change the, uh, the fillet size, and I can do it instantly instead of having to do this in separate steps beforehand. So a uh, nice uh, feature to have here. So that's the uh, offset face available. You can do it all in one go instead of having to do it separately. And we can also look at some of the more complex uh, fillets that we couldn't, or chamfers that we weren't able to do before. So again, I'll highlight the, um, the edge here, and uh, we'll specify the face-to-face. -face. So if you work with this in the fillet option, we're able to select these faces and just uh, select kind of what the hold line is going to be and create some nice chamfers with this complex kind of shape out. We wouldn't have to kind of go through the extra step steps. Quick and easy to do. And, uh, oh, I should have actually dragged that up here. Let me drag it under the shell to make it, oh, sorry. There we go. Let me fix that up. Actually, I'll do this here. So now, yeah, this is actually a good example just to show you if any errors pop up in the way. Um, beforehand, you'd have to right-click on it to see what was wrong with it. But now if I actually highlight the object, um, it's able to tell me uh, what the comment is. So it says the feature could not be completed, failed to some merging of the bodies. So let me just uh, modify this here. Uh, where is it? Here, I'll do this again. So I just should do this for the shell option. We'll redo that chamfer and select the face to face again. open up the copy, and uh, just taking a look at it here, what I wanted to say was if we edit the feature now with the, um, with the chamfer here originally, we can now change it into a fillet automatically. So um, you can do that instantaneously, change the curvature type that you want to use, and uh, it can change from one to the other instead of having to do the extra steps for those features. So having the interchangeability is awesome. So. Now let's take a look at uh, a new feature, like I talked about the advanced tool here. So I'll just open up the, uh, the file part. So typically, the, if you were to create a multi-step whole system, you'd have to do it in separate features one at a time. Uh, it's pretty easy geometry to create. It would just be a little bit more time consuming. So in the, <clears throat> in the new feature here, if I look at the feature tab in the command manager, under the whole wizard, we now have an advanced whole features. So I'm just going to be editing the one that was already created in this model here for this manifold. I'll just open it up here and talk about a little bit of this interface that we have going on. So we have this little flyout plane for, uh, plane for the, um, for the whole multi-step process here. I'll just specify the first thing I'll do is the far side of my multi-step. So for us, it's going to be this end face. I get a nice preview for the, uh, the stack. So here I can also change the stack type or I can add a one extra on top of it. So first, let's just define the first one here. Um, it is the same kind of layout as the original whole wizard. You can select your size. Or if you don't like what the sizes are available, you can always change the custom sizing. And then I can just add to these stacks or remove them. So for here, I'll highlight this one that I just created. And then I'll add a stack to the bottom. And then I can also change the uh, stack type here with the different ones that we have near side counterbore countersink, uh, the taper tap, and uh, the far side as well. So we'll do a taper tap on the other end here, and I'll change the size to half, half inch here. And you also just have to specify the depth of that hole, right? So same as you would before, it's just doing it in a single operation here. And then we'll add another stack to the bottom. Again, just a regular hole here, and uh, change the sizing. Make it a drilled size here and we'll just make that one millimeter. And you can do this multiple instance, so just having these stacks, so you can always just remove them, delete the active element that you currently have highlighted, add it to the top and the bottom, 
and it's easy to visualize it. So once you have that in here, um, you can see how a lot faster that was to create instead of having to do these individual holes one by one and having you know six features instead of just a single feature. So that's that's uh, that's a nice one that I like to kind of work with, especially if you're working with any kind of hollow or kind of downhole size size tools. Um, if we look at the inside or kind of transparent view of this manifold, we can see that we use this advanced hole feature multiple times. Um, if it ever comes down to changing it, you know, you kind of want to create a new one, you can also have favorites of those stacks that you created. So once you have that definition labeled, um, you can change the favorites here and uh, anything that you've kind of used beforehand, if your company has some sort of standard to use, uh, you don't have to redo those stacks every time. You can save them in the favorites here. So once you have the stack ready, just click on the save favorite and then you just have kind of a drop down menu of those and you can easily access it. So that's a nice new feature about 2017 that I like. It just makes it more simpler and easier to use and uh, much faster to create that simple geometry that wasn't available before. So now let's take a look at some of the advancements with the surfacing tools. So beforehand we'll open up this uh, forearm cuff here of the model. Uh, and uh, before that, you know, you usually have to wrap some sort of complex geometry on um, on your any sketches or things like that. And beforehand, we were only able to do that on um, uh, cylindrical or conal surfaces. We weren't able to do it on complex geometry like this. So we have uh, two different surfaces here. So I'll just uh, delete the wrap here <clears throat> and show you. So we have this geometry of the logo, for example. And all I want to do is just wrap it. Obviously, if you know about the wrap feature, you have the emboss and the deboss. You can also split those faces. Um, I can just take it now, and instead of, like I said before, just doing a cylindrical face or conal, I can select multiple faces and have that preset. Um, and uh, I'll have uh, an emboss for this one right here for the logo shape. And then once this is done, uh, we can also take the sketch here of the logo and using the instant 3D option, right, I can also change kind of uh, the location of it and put the logo right in the position that I want just by dragging, you know, with the arrows here back and forth and positioning it in and just pressing OK. And uh, it didn't really do a good job of putting that right in the middle, but uh, I can control that and kind of move it around to fit it into the middle right where I want it. Now let's go back to the overall assembly here <clears throat> and take a look at this uh, finger support cuff here on the other end. We also have this complex uh, surfacing here and we probably just want to remove some of the weight out of the object to make it a little bit more lighter for the user to use. So again, just looking back here, uh, let's take a look. I'll remove this, the fillets there and uh, Uh, where am I here? Oh, sorry. So let's take a look at some of the things before. So beforehand, we'd be able to offset uh, off on curvature here beforehand, only on kind of planar faces. We weren't able to do it on curved surfaces. But now if I actually look at it here under the surface tab in the command manager, I can also offset on the surface in particular and create an offset and sorry, my graphics are seem to be not updating with the video here. Uh, let me try that again here. Let's see, back there, change, there we go, just the default back. So I can roll it back to my surface here, and beforehand, like I said, it would only have to be on a straight planar face that I can offset on, but here, if I just turn it on, I can select any one of the edges, so if I create a change, it's chain, it's going to create that offset with the edges that I have selected. Or what I can also do is that if I turn it on and I only have one edge selected, if I want to reverse it in the opposite direction, I can go that way as well. And then again, just clicking on that overall face will select the, uh, the overall outer edges and I can easily have that 3D sketch created on that plane, which then I can use to trim the, that excess uh, surface that I have. So we'll select to keep this one and remove the rest. And now I have that uh, material removed. I'll roll the part back here. And the last thing we'll do is just add in some of the uh, fillets just to remove any of the sharp corners. We'll change that to a little bit of a smaller shape. <clears throat> and having the selection toolbar turned on, if you do use that often, just having to kind of pre-select or 
um, the corner is already associated. Now we also have the ability to close that selection toolbar. If it's kind of in the way and you don't like it, you can just close it right off. We'll just select the uh, start loop here just to round all of the edges. And now I have this shape uh, created. And re with the remove material, it looks nice with my complex geometry. It didn't take me too much time aside from just having to recover my uh, closed off um, files with my SOLIDWORKS being closed. So those are the things, some of the things that have been enhanced in 2017 to just make it a lot quicker and faster uh, to uh, <clears throat> remove items or kind of change the geometry that we're working with beforehand. So one more thing that I wanted to show you today is um, just going back here to the sheet metal part. <clears throat> so we got uh, two basic kind of enhancements here. So one is with the normal cut option. Open this part up here, and uh, the geometry used to have some issues with the uh, with the way that it created it, the way they would project the uh, upper and lower contours. So if I look at the transparent part between between where these two bars cross, you can actually still see some interference between the bar and the actual part, and uh, that's just the way that that normal kind of sketch is being projected onwards. So this, uh, <clears throat> if I open up this part here. And I look at that cut extrude here, I can see it a little bit more clear, clearly about that interference. So that may not be the, uh, the obviously, the, the design intent that you want to have. So if I just edit that extrusion, um, I can also now have this option to optimize that geometry. So what that will do is actually will fix it to what probably what is the, um, the outcome that you want it to have. So I'll just turn that on, and that's turned on by default in 2017. If you want to turn it off, you'll have to do that manually. But now I can take a look at it and see that there is no interference with the sheet metal. So it's a small thing to not having to worry about it. Um, now let's open up the other kind of corner treatments that we have here. So before in 2016, you were only able to do corner, corner reliefs where two sheet metal bands come together. But now we can also do it where the three, where we have a three sheet metal band corner. So when we just highlight our corner relief feature here, we have the ability to select a two bend or a three corner bend and just have the software automatically collect all the corners for us. Again, if I just highlight each one of them individually, uh, text is hiding for me today, um, I can also change those individually one by one. They don't have to be the same corner type as you probably know, so they can be uh, rectangular, circular, a tear, an auburn, or a uh, full round cut. So each one of them can be individual or kind of done in a single operation but different from one another. So if I just rotate the model and they will preview correct, correctly in the flat pattern once you have the drawing ready for it. So let's uh, take a look to open up the drawing here and just to show you that it does associate fully. And so here if I just zoom in here we can see all of the different shapes for the three corner relief. And uh, hopefully that will make, make things a little bit easier when you design in 2017 with your products and making any changes. Um, that is all that I wanted to cover today. Does anybody have any questions? All right, let's open up here. So how do you turn on breadcrumbs? OK, so the breadcrumbs are, should be on go back here and if uh, if you click on any one of the objects they should pop up at the top here if they don't uh, you just go to the options here and if believe if I just uh, turn on if I just search the breadcrumbs option here it will be in the display so in the display if you don't have them just show breadcrumbs on selection That should be there. Uh, <clears throat> and then just to kind of summarize what we covered today, again, we talked about the design component and new powerful tools that we can use within SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so we talked about the general user interface changes. So just made it a little bit more um, simplified to use. We looked at the sketching, all the features that are added in for part modeling, such as uh, the features added for advanced hole and threading and the chamfer versus fillet. Uh, we looked at the surfacing offset on Curve, uh, face, curve faces or surfaces, as well as the wrap feature that's available now to do it on the complex geometry, as well as the sheet metal enhancement just to having those normal cuts 
and as well as the three corner relief bench. So for the general user interface, we looked at the breadcrumbs, um, the hide show all items. Then we had the parent child visualization is just a little bit more clarified if you do use that. We looked at the order of configurations that you can now move on and then also the comments that you can add in. You can also add in pictures as well as add in to those feature types such as sensors and mates. Uh, the last thing I forgot to mention is the decal visibility on display states. So let's just go back in here. We have different colors here for the, um, for the label. So I can also change these with the display state so I can have a blue one or a yellow one that I can add with my decals and easily change that uh, if that's the kind of product that you're going to be designing. As well as we talked about the sketching, just the new alt feature or the alt key that is available to select the contour instead of having to right click and select it. The shortcut menus are a little bit more uh, clear and clean visibility to select them. And then we looked at the transparent option available in the section view to see kind of hidden items once you cross into it to see how, the, any uh, detail inside of a model. And then, like I said, looking at the thread feature with the trim and end start face, you can also have a multi-start option. We're now also able to do a bi-directional circular pattern. And then as well with the sweep profile, we're able to select faces, edges, and curves. And then looking at the fillets and chamfers, so now we have the advanced options in the chamfers. So we have multi-distance, chordal, and variable. So we can do multi-size chamfers uh, in a one single operation, as well as that we can now interchange between fillets and chamfers um, if we decide to do so. And then the biggest thing that I really like is this multi-step advanced whole feature that is available to do in a single operation. We can save those uh, whole stacks as our favorites and reuse them over and over again. And then also manage this complexity in the property manager with the flyout <clears throat> pane of the uh, advanced hole, adding and removing those stacks as uh, easily as just clicking one or the other. And then just looking at the surfacing here on the wrap-on surface, you can do it instead of just having cylinders and cones. You can have it with multiple faces and then having an instant 3D drag as well as the offset curve on uh, uh, curved surface here so you can select edges or complete faces to do so. And then again with the sheet metal we have the three bend corner treatment as well as the optimization for the normal cuts so you don't have any interferences with your model. Um, again just a reminder at the end uh, if you have any other questions reach out to our support team or you can reach out to me as well if you have any questions. Um, I'll include my email here, bring it at the top. <clears throat> Again, uh, so if you have any, give me a shout here on my email at nikkis at hawkridgesys.com. Thank you so much for your um, afternoon. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy days to uh, hang out with us and, and learn something new that's in 2017 SOLIDWORKS.